viewers and welcome to V Concept College English. My name is Ernest. Today I want to start a new series on lessons and structure. And this series is entitled 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. Therefore, in this series, we shall look at the reasons for misused expressions in English and offer tips for avoiding these mistakes in your speech and writings. Can they follow up with all the videos that we shall be uploading in this series to catch a glimpse of the full gist? Have a happy view. Welcome to the third episode of our 21 in no video series entitled 200 commonly misused expressions in everyday English. In our third episode today, we shall be looking at word sets 11 to 20. Word sets 11 to 20. In our previous episode, in our previous video, we examined word sets 1 to 10. So, in this episode today, we shall be considering expressions like all the world, my possible best, possible best chance, under the rain, the rain beats me, tight friends, the tap is flowing, Bobby sun, barbed my hair, neatly barbed. So as usual, like we did in the previous episode, we shall pick an expression from here and put it in a non-standard usage. And then we take up the analysis of the expression as constructed. We shall be examining the error type with the construction and then we reconstruct it in standard form. That is, we put it in standard usage. And then we now offer some grammar tips that can help to avoid whatever error we must have spotted from the non-standard construction. So this is what we shall be doing in this video today. Right away, let's get started with the first set of expression, which is all the whole. This is our non-standard construction from word set 11. All the whole. All the whole students have assembled. When you look at the expression very closely, you discover that two aspects of it have been underlined, all and the whole. So the problems with the expression lie in those two areas that are underlined in it. Before we begin to go into the analysis of those underlined aspects of it, let us identify the type of error that this expression can fall into. The error type is verbosity slash tautological error. So we can say that this expression is verbose or that it is tautological. Now, let's consider the standard construction of this expression. You can say all the students have assembled. Instead of saying all the whole students, you say all the students have assembled. Or you say the whole students have assembled. You can remove all and then simply say the whole students have assembled or you remove the whole and say all the students have assembled. So it is not ideal to use all and the whole together in any expression. What are the grammar tips? Number one, the expression is redundant. When an expression is redundant, we say it is a verbose expression. That is, it has too many words that are saying the same thing in it. In other words, too many words that mean the same thing have been used in the expression. So in that case, we say that the expression is redundant. You can find details about this explanation from our first episode. That is episode one of 21 of this series, where we discuss the 12 causes of errors or commonly misused expressions in everyday English. So we explain redundancy, verbosity, topological expression, and so many others. Now, this is the second grammar tip. All means the whole. All means the whole. So they should not be used together in an expression. 
So that is that on word set 11. We shall now take a step further by considering word set 12. My possible best. Here we have two non-standard sentences constructed from word set 12. And the first one is, I did my possible best. The second one is, I did my best possible. Take note that these two expressions are no standard. And we are going to be discussing their analysis. Before we begin, we have something in blue here. It says, possible best is not sequential for these two words. So these two words, whenever they are used together, they don't come as possible best. However, we have here that best possible as sequential, but not usable in this context of doing your best. Let's now begin to look at the details of what I just said. Error type. The error type with these expressions can be classified as semantic or lexical. So we can say that these expressions have semantic error or a lexical error. Now let's go into detailed analysis. I did my possible best. We are saying that this expression is not sequential, so we are just going to forget about it. Not sequential, like I explained before, in the sense that whenever possible and best are coming together in an expression, possible doesn't come before best. So it is best that comes before possible. So we are just going to do away with that first one. Then, if we are going to do away with that first one, it's going to be on semantic ground. In other words, we are going to do away with the expression because the words are poorly organized or poorly arranged. So on that ground, we can do away with the first one. Then coming to the second one, I did my best possible. This is beautiful. Not that it is a standard expression, but because the words best and possible coming together in an expression are in a good sequence. Because the words best and possible coming together are in their right sequence. So that is why in blue we have sequential but not usable in this context. As far as I can say, the conflict with this very expression lies in the fact that people are easily confused with the use of best in this context. You know, because best, we know best to be an adjective, good, better, best. So, anywhere you see best, you're going to begin to think of what? Things like an adjective. So, anywhere you see best in an expression, you're going to begin to suspect that it must be an adjective. But mind you, in this context, best is not an adjective. Now, the problem that everyday people have with this expression is because best is known as an adjective but they do not realize that when a pronoun man that is adjectival pronoun is standing before an adjective the adjective is no longer functioning as an adjective the function will change to that of a noun in other words best in this expression is a noun so you cannot use a noun and add an adjective to the back of it. Like, we have something here. Okay, let's just, we have said that the standard usage of this construction is supposed to be something like, I did my best, simple, and as simple as that. Now, what are the grammatics? We are already discussing the grammatics. Look at the first tip that we have here written on the board. Best is used as a noun, just like I was explaining here, best is used as a noun. They say that best here is being used as a noun. And if it is being used as a noun, it cannot be followed by possible because possible is an adjective. Although the two words are adjective, they are both adjectives. But because pronomen that is adjectival pronoun is now standing before one of them, this one is no longer an adjective but serving as a noun. Take note that this word best can be used as a noun, can be used as an adjective, can be used as a verb. 
I can say something like, I'm going to best you during your wedding. That is, I'm going to be your best man, so I will best you. So, in that context, it's being used as a verb. But if I say, my best, this is my best, my best, like my house. Try to understand that anytime a pronoun is standing before a word, that word is a noun. So, if I say, my house, my best, so you can see that best is a noun. Okay, let's say something like, I built my house possible. Yes, that is, I do. I did my best possible. Just look at my best possible. My house possible. My is phenomenal. Best now, like I explained, it's a noun. So house. I built my house possible. What kind of expression is that? So it's unthinkable. If you look at the second one, I try to, again, look for another expression to really help you to understand what I'm trying to explain here. I built my house beautiful. Yes, man is mine and house is best. That is, anytime man is standing before any word is a noun. So, my best, my house, beautiful, beautiful, possible, beautiful. So, both words are adjectives. I built my house beautiful. So, what kind of construction is that? That is why this expression is wrong in English. You don't say, I did my best possible. It is a wrong construction because adjective cannot be used at the back of a noun. Adjective cannot be used to follow a noun in an expression. Like you can't say, I built my house beautiful. So the simple thing that you can say is, I did my best. Then I have additional grammar tip here that's going to help us when we get to word set 13, that is in our word set 13, this tip is going to help us there. It says, best possible is a usable sequence. I think I've explained that time and again in this analysis. So, best possible is a usable sequence, whereas possible best is not the usual way that these two words normally come together in English. One thing you must understand about English is that words have their proper way of coming together. Words have a proper way of joining them together to speak in English. That is why we have structure. If it were not so, then there would be nothing like structure in English. So whenever we are talking about lessons, words, then we talk about structure, how to bring them together. These words are special words, in quotes, special in quotes, because anytime they are coming together, they must come together in their proper sequence. And that proper sequence is for best to come before possible. Not possible coming before best. I can explain that again and again because I know this expression is causing a lot of conflict in everyday English. So today, I hope you have fully understood why this expression cannot go as I did my best possible. So, possible is not necessary there, just like you cannot say, I built my house beautiful. So, that's the reason. Like I'm trying to explain to us in our analysis, best possible is a usable sequence, both as adjective to modify a noun. We are going to be discussing that when we get to word set 13. So, let's move forward to word set 13 immediately. Our non standard construction from word sense 13 is my students have the possible best chance to learn. We are considering this to contrast what we discussed or explained under word sense 12. Now, there's nothing wrong with this expression apart from the fact that possible at best are not in their proper sequence when being used together in an expression, like we have explained. Now, what's the error term? In that case, we say the error with this expression is semantic in nature. So this expression has got a semantic error. Now, what's the standard construction? My students have the best possible chance to learn. So by rearranging the words, by bringing best to come before possible, they are going to get the right expression to use instead of this non-standard form of it. Then, what are the grammar tips? So, we have for the first one here, best possible has been used to modify the noun chance. So, this is a direct contrast to what we explained under word set 12. Under word set 12, we're explaining that best is being used as a noun. But in this case, the two words, which we know, of course, that the two words are adjectives. 
Now, they are performing their proper function in this expression as adjective to modify chance. So, of course, you know what we mean by complex adjective. That is a situation where you use more than one adjective or two adjectives in an expression to modify a noun. So that is what is happening here. Best and possible have been used to modify the noun chance. So that's the first tip. Then for the second tip, we have here that it means the best chance that is possible. So the way you can interpret this expression is that my students have the best chance that is possible. So when you come to this context, the best possible can come together. So this is what we must understand about the use of best possible to modify a noun. With that, we move forward to our next word team, which is under the rain. Our non-standard construction with word set 14 is he is under the rain or he is under the sun. If you look at the expression very closely, you will discover that the word under has been underlined. Now, that's where the problem with the expression lies. So, what is the error with the expression? The error type to which we can classify this very expression is lexical in nature. In other words, we can say that the expression has a lexical error. Then let's look at the standard construction of it. He is in the rain or he is in the sun. So instead of saying he is under the rain, you would say he is in the rain. And instead of saying he is under the sun, you would say he is in the sun. There was the grammar tip to explain that. The first grammar tip, rain or sun, is it like a bridge or tree to sit on that? Then number two, in the rain or in the sun literally means it is all around you. So it is best to say he is in the rain, not he is under the rain. With that, we move to the next word set, which is word set 15, the rain beats me. Our non-standard construction from word set 15 is the rain beats me yesterday. When you look at the expression very closely, you discover that the word beat has been underlined and that is where the problem lies. So what is the error type? The error with this expression is lexical in nature. So we can say that the expression has a lexical error because the word beat has not been used properly in this expression. Now let's go for the standard construction of the same expression. Number one, in other words, we can provide two standard ways that this expression can be reconstructed. The first one is the rain drenched me yesterday. Take note of the word drenched here. And then number two, we also have things like, I got drenched by the rain yesterday. So in either way, you would discover that the word drenched is the proper word to use in place of beat. And that is why the expression is carrying a lexical error. A wrong word has been used in the wrong place. So, we now go further to the grammar tips. Number one, the rain beats me is figurative in nature. In other words, it is a personification. Figuratively, this expression is correct. In other words, we can use it in literature, story writing, poems, and the rest of that. But in everyday English, like we have the number two, not appropriate for regular usage. So you cannot be speaking figuratively to everyday people. They may not understand what you are trying to say. That is why this expression is tagged non-standard. We now move forward to the next set of words, where it said 16, which is tight friends. Our non-standard construction from where it says 16 is John and James are tight friends. If you look at the expression very closely, you discover that tight has been underlined, indicating where the problem lies in the expression. So what is the error time? The error with this expression is tautological in nature. In other words, we can say that the expression has a tautological error. Then let's consider the standard construction. John and James are tight, simple. John and James are tight. Now, what does it mean? If you say of two people 
that they are tight friends, then you mean that they are close or they are best friends or they are intimate friends. So we do not use tight with friends at the same time as tight has already done the job. So when you say John and James are tight, we already know that you are saying they are close friends, best friends or intimate friends. Let's move forward to the next word set 17, which is tab is running. Our non-standard construction from word set 17 is I left the tab flowing with the words flowing underlined, indicating where the problem lies in the expression. Therefore, what is the error type? The error with this expression is lexical in nature because a word has been used improperly. Now, let's talk about the standard usage. Number one, I left the tab on. So instead of saying I left the tab flowing, you can simply say, I left the tap on, or you say, I left the tap running. Now, what are the grammar tips? Number one, the tap is a hard metal, hence cannot flow. So when you say something is flowing, you can use that to talk about a river or water. However, water can flow from the tap. So that we have the second tip said, water can flow from it to say it is on or it is running. So when water is flowing from the tap, then you can say the tap is on or the tap is running. If you say the water is flowing from the tap, then you are saying correct, but not the tap is flowing. The tap is flowing, it's ambiguous. So we can at the same time say that the problem with this expression is ambiguity. It's ambiguity, that is, the tap is flowing, like the tap has melted and is now flowing like a river. So you can see that tap is flowing can also be categorized as an ambiguous expression. We now take a step further and consider our word set 18, which is Barbie Salon. Our non-standard construction from word set 18 is, I want to visit a Barbie Salon. I want to visit a Barbie Salon. Now, what's the problem with this expression? The problem with this expression is lexical in nature. In other words, this expression has a lexical error. Then let's talk about the standard construction. Instead of saying, I want to visit a Barbie salon, you can simply say, you must visit a salon or barber shop to have a haircut. Now let's talk about the grammar teams. The word Barbie is not usable in English. So instead of saying, Barbie salon, you can simply say Baba show or simply salon. You can simply say salon or you say Baba show. Let's move forward to the next expression, which is number 19. Our non standard construction from word set 19 is I want to barb my hair. When you look at the expression very closely, you discover that barb has been underlined. Now, what's the error with that expression? That very word is the problem with the expression. And we can categorize this expression as lexical in nature. In other words, we can say that the problem has a lexical error. Now, let's talk about the standard usage of this expression. We can have something like, I want to barber my hair. So instead of saying, I want to barb my hair, you would say, I want to baba my hair. Or you say, I want to have a haircut. After you have babbled your hair, then you can say that you have had a haircut. Now, let's talk about the grammar tips. Number one, to bab does not mean anything related to haircut. This word bab, according to several dictionaries, has close to seven, eight, or nine meanings. And none of those meanings is anything close to having a haircut. Barb is a word that has been fabricated into everyday usage. It is not usable in English. It doesn't mean anything close to having a haircut. So let's take a good note of that. Now, let's look at the second thing. The word is Baba. 
This is a little bit confusing. The man himself is a Baba, and then what he does is to Baba. The man himself is a Baba, and what he does to people is to Baba their hair. So the process of giving people a haircut is known as Baba. That means the word is both noun and verb. So you are going to say, I want to go and meet a Baba to Baba my hair. So you can have a construction like that. I take it again. I want to go and meet a Baba to Baba my hair. Or you say, I want to go to a Baba shop to Baba my hair. So you meet a Baba to Baba your hair. Take a very good note of that under this very expression in everyday English. Our final set of words for today is neatly bagged. We still want to say something around this word bag, which is in everyday usage. Now, how do you use it in past tense form? That's what we want to talk about under word set 20. Our non-standard construction from word set 20 is his hair was neatly barbered. The word barbered has been underlined to indicate where the problem lies in this expression. Then what type of error has this expression? It is a lexical error. That means a wrong word has been used in the expression. Then let's talk about the standard usage. His hair was neatly barbered. Take a very good note of this. The word barbered, like we explained under word set 19. The person that gives people a haircut is called a barber. And the process of giving the people the haircut is called barber too. That means that the word can be used both as a noun and as a verb. And when you are going to use the word as a verb, you have to understand that it can take past tense form or it takes present continuous form. So that you can say something like, his hair was neatly barbered from the verb barber. Or when you want to use it in continuous form, then you are going to say something like, he was barbering his hair. Or the barber was barbering his hair. The barber barbered his hair. I want to meet a barber to barber my hair. Please take a good note of the use of this word. And that the word barbed is not usable in English. So that is how we come to the end of episode 3 of 21. Please kindly drop your comments and questions under the video so that we can keep the conversation going. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay blessed till we meet again.